Good day. Welcome to another session of Fork Tutorials. Today we are going to look at manufacturing accounts with a special focus on final accounts for manufacturing companies. Now, let us know that manufacturing companies also prepare final accounts just like any other company. And what we have known for now is that final accounts are prepared basically from the income statement and the statement of financial position. That is if it's for a sole trader and if it's a company, we are going to look at the income surplus account maybe and the statement of changes in equity in addition. But when it comes to organizations that manufacture their own products, I mean they build it inside, they don't go and buy to come and sell, they are not into buying and selling. Then there is going to be a small change to the face of the way they prepare their final accounts because they are manufacturing organizations and they manufacture their own products and so they sell what they have manufactured or they have produced and so they don't have issues with external purchases of products most of the time and therefore there is going to be a little change in the way we prepare their final account for example when we try to prepare final accounts for any ordinary company which is involved in buying and selling. We always start with our sales figure or sales revenue for the year, which we are going to put there. Then after that, we will less the cost of sales. Now, in, in calculating cost of sales, we know that we have to start with the opening stock or opening inventory, usually, when they have. And then we add purchases which is the net purchases. And when we add the net purchases, we have the cost of goods available for sale. Now, let us take the case of a manufacturing company where they manufacture their own product. It means that they may not have these purchases to give for you to prepare accounts because purchases means that they did not manufacture their own product. They went out to buy before they came to sell to get the revenue. And then you are comparing the cost of what they purchased and all that is related to the sales. And so when it comes to manufacturing companies, you may not be seeing purchases of the final products or the finished goods. And therefore what happens is that because they manufactured their own products, they incurred some cost in production. And so the cost that they will incur in producing the goods will now replace the purchases. And so for a typical manufacturing account setting, instead of adding your purchases to the opening inventory, you are really going to add your cost of production because you did not buy from any external source, sorry, you produce your own goods, you manufactured your own goods. And so instead of adding purchases to get a cost of sales, whatever, you are now going to add your cost of production to get your cost of goods available for sale. And then you let or you take out your closing stock of the finished goods before you have your cost of sales to compare with the sales revenue to get your gross profits. And so the procedure for um, solving final accounts for manufacturing organizations is quite different from those that do buying and selling. And so our focus is going to be on the manufacturing organizations. Now, let us take note that we are already familiar with how to prepare final accounts with this format. The only new thing here is the cost of production. And so we are going to find out how to get, how to get a good cost of production. Now, take note that when you are given a question to solve, you first of all have to find your cost of production before you start preparing the income statement. And therefore, we are going to prepare a manufacturing account. The purpose of preparing a manufacturing account is to ascertain this cost of production, which we are going to use to prepare the final account. Of course, they may not have any external purchase or the finished goods. And therefore, if you don't prepare the manufacturing account to ascertain the cost of production, you cannot prepare because that is going to replace what you knew as purchases inside your final account. Okay, and so the next thing and the most important thing for this very lesson now is for us to learn how to prepare the manufacturing accounts. And so be with me as I take you through 
the simple way that you can be able to ascertain your cost of production from the manufacturing account. Okay, so before we look at the format for the manufacturing account, I want you to understand or revise some basic principles from costing. Now, let us know that to get a manufacturing account or to get a production cost, uh, we need to go through the elements of cost structure. And so let us try reminding ourselves some of the basics. Now, when we are going to look at cost classification basically according to nature, and so there will be some material costs uh, direct and indirect. Um, let's say there will be some direct material cost. There will be some direct labor cost. And then there will be some direct expenses. Alright, so for our direct material cost, our direct labor cost, and our direct expenses, when we sum up these three, then we have our prime cost. Okay? And then we add our factory overheads. And then when we list and add up our factory overheads, then we have our production cost. And so what I want us to try and do is that let us try and get the element of cost structure. Okay? And then when we have the element of cost structure, we can make a headway. So let me use DM for direct material and then direct labor and then direct expenses. Then we have our prime cost. And when we have our prime cost, then the next thing to do is to add our overheads. Now, overheads, we have two main classifications of the overheads. We have the factory overheads and we have the non-factory overheads. The factory overheads are related to production. And so sometimes we call it production overheads. Then we have the non-production or non-factory overheads. Now, when we want to determine our cost of production, it is the factory overheads that we add to the prime cost to get the cost of production. We do not add the non-factory overheads. And so, we, will, we are going to have the factory overhead component. Now, factory overheads may be more than one. So, we will list them up, and then let's see we have the total. Now, when we add our factory overheads to the prime cost, then we have the cost of production. And so we are not going to add the non-factory overheads. This is all that we need for the manufacturing account, as far as the manufacturing account is concerned. And so when we have this, we are okay with the manufacturing account. Now this is just an outline. This is not the account in its own, on its own, sorry. This is not the account on its own. This is just an outline. Now, the main issue here is how to get the direct material used in production. Because the question is not going to give you the direct material as I have made it so obvious here. So what we are going to do is that we are going to have some items and then we are going to calculate for our own direct material cost. And once we have our direct material cost, the rest is easy. We just add any direct labor available. If there is any direct expenses, we add to get a prime cost. And then we add our factory overheads to get our cost of production. And so let us quickly go into the format with these same principles and then try and understand it. And so manufacturing accounts for the year ended. So just like the final accounts, we are going to do manufacturing accounts. Now, we are going to first of all calculate for our direct materials. I told you that we need our direct materials plus our direct labor and our direct expenses to get a prime cost. Now, direct labor is usually given in the question as you see. You also see direct expenses when you see. But to get a direct material cost, you need to go through some workings. And so, we are going to start with finding our direct materials. This is the format. So with the direct materials, as I have underlined it, meaning I'm going to work for it. We are going to use the last currency sign. We are going to use the last currency sign for the item. But then, I'm going to work for it here before I transfer. And so, we are going to start just like we start with the calculation of cost of sales. We are going to start with our opening stock of the raw materials. And then if there is any purchases of raw materials, we do that. 
Okay, and so just like we do for cost of sales calculation, you say opening stock. Now this opening stock is your opening stock of raw material. Not now you are going to have three different types of stocks in a typical manufacturing account question. We are going to see stock of the raw materials, both opening and closing. We are going to see stocks of work in progress. That is works in process. Goods that are in the process of being transformed into finished goods. We are going to see the stock of it, opening and closing stocks. And then we are going to see the stocks of finished goods. Goods that have gone through the production system and they are ready for sale. We are going to see opening stock for that and the closing stock for that in your question. No. When you are solving a manufacturing account, you need that of the raw materials and not of the work in progress or for the finished goods. When you are calculating for raw materials, you need the opening stock of the raw materials. So that is the opening stock of raw materials. And then you add any purchases of materials. So you add your purchases of materials. Now, take note that these purchases of materials can also have some adjustments with it. And so when there are purchases for materials and you see adjustments on the purchases, adjustments like carriage inwards, return outwards, as we know, then you first of all bring your purchase figure to the first currency sign and then you adjust for your carriage inwards. And then if there is any returns, outwards of materials or purchases returns of materials you subtract and so your final net purchase figure is what you are bringing here and so what we need is that we need our net purchases to add up to the opening stock of materials and then we have a final figure that we call cost of raw materials available for for use so cost of raw materials available for use Okay, so instead of say like we used to call the, that of the trading organization, we say cost of goods available for sale. Here we say cost of raw materials available for use. And then we can subtract our closing stock of raw materials. Take note, everything here is about materials. So closing stock of raw materials will be subtracted. And when we subtract our closing stock of raw materials, then we have actually the cost, the raw materials that were used. And so we bring it here as our final answer. And so just like I showed you with the elements of cost structure, that we need direct material, direct labor, and direct expenses to get our prime cost, the direct material will not be given in the question. So the direct material figure is what I have just gotten. And you need to go through this process to get your direct material. And that is what I went through to get. And so this is the direct material that I have gotten. Then I can now add my direct labor or wages straight away here. If there is any direct expenses, like a high of a special plant or machine, and then if there are any royalties or any other direct expense, we'll add that. And so we have our direct material, our direct labor, and our direct expenses. And when we add up this three, nothing has changed. We call it our prime cost. Our aim is to establish the cost of production. And then we need the direct material, direct labor, and direct expenses to get our prime cost. So indeed, we have not changed anything. The only thing we have to do, or, or the hell we have to go through, was how we arrived at our direct material. And you have to take note of the process very well. Okay, so this is your prime cost. Now that you've gotten your prime cost, you look for your factory overheads and you add them. Another name for factory overheads is production overhead. And so with the factory overheads, you can list as many as is in the question. You can have factory lighting, factory heating, factory power, depreciation of plants and machinery. Now take note that with the factory overheads, it's not all the time that they will give it to you in the question straightforward as you expect to see it. Sometimes they will list the overhead and they will try and use um, percentages to try and differentiate that for factory and that for the non-factory. And so we will need to do apportionment. 
and then get the overheads that are related to the factory alone. Overheads that are related to the factory alone, and then we will list them down here. And so when we list our factory overheads, we sum them up and then we add up to get a production cost. And so let's assume that we have just two factory overheads, which are depreciation of plants. It's a factory overhead because this depreciation is related to the factory. And then we have factory power. So let us assume these are the only two factory overheads that we have. And so when we add these two, we bring the final figure and then we add it to the prime cost. And ladies and gentlemen, when you add your factory overhead to your prime cost, then you have the cost of production that you are looking for. And so this is what you need to go and start your final account for finished goods. Okay, so this is our cost of production. So when you get your cost of production like this, this is actually the figure that you need to go and prepare your income statement. And that is going to replace your purchases. But take note that there are two different things that may come up to change the figure that you transfer. One of them is the adjustment of work in progress uh, balances. And the other one is a manufacturing, possible manufacturing profit, which may give you a market value instead of a cost of production. And so when you get a cost of production like this, and in the question, there are work in progress, like opening stock for work in progress and a closing stock for work in progress. Then in that case, you are not going to take this figure straight away to the income statement. You have to adjust for the work in progress. And so when you get a cost of production like this, and there is a work in progress in your question, then it means that you have to adjust it. And therefore, this cost of production will become your gross cost of production. Your gross cost of production. And then you add the opening figure for work in progress, WIP. The opening work in progress balance will be added to your gross cost of production and then you less or you take out the closing work in progress figure. That is, you subtract that from that. And so what I'm going to do is that once you arrive at your gross cost of production, you add the opening work in progress figure and then you take out the closing work in progress. This is the work in progress at the end. And then you have a new figure that you call your net cost of production. And so cost of production will be cost of production when there are no work in progress balances to adjust. Then it's your cost of production that you transfer. But when you have a work in progress adjustment in the question, you have to first of all add up the opening figure and take out the closing figure for the work in progress balances. And then you have a new figure that you call net cost of production. And it is this new net of, uh, cost of production that you are going to transfer into your income statement to replace purchases in the calculation of cost of sales. Okay, so that is the first one, work in progress. And then there could be a profit transfer as well. This is your net cost of production, and this is what you are actually transferring to calculate for cost of sales. Now, when you get a question where transfer is to be made at a profit, I mean, there are cases where after the manufacturing or cost of production is achieved, the factory wants to transfer to finished goods at a profit. And so they will set a profit margin. So let's say 20% on the cost of production as a profit. And when they add up the profits, they will get a new figure that we call market value. And so when you have a question that you have to calculate for manufacturing profits, then you have to add your manufacturing profit to the net cost of production and then get a new figure called market value. And it is the market value that now you transfer. And so what you are going to do is that in a question where you still have to calculate for manufacturing profit, after you get your net cost of production, you add your manufacturing profit. So the manufacturing profit will now be added again. And then you have a new figure that you call market value. So now you see that we have jumped from just the normal cost of production. 
I told you that there could be adjustment for work in progress. That will give you a net cost of production. And in the case where you have to get a manufacturing profit, you add that to get your market value. And ladies and gentlemen, it is the market value that you are going to transfer to calculate for cost of sales. So now, it is the market value that will replace purchases in the income statement. Now, let me also explain something to you that it is not in every question that you are going to have both the work in progress and the market manufacturing profit. There are some questions that there will be no work in progress. And so that means that whenever, when, as soon as you get to the cost of production, you just add your manufacturing profit to get the market value. Now, in some questions, too, there will be no manufacturing profit. You just have to adjust for work in progress to get the net cost of production. And if you get a question where both are present, then this is how you will approach it. And so this is a simple format for the manufacturing account. Take note that the only thing that became a little uh, burdensome was how to calculate for the direct materials figure included in production cost. And that is where you have to look at it very well. But if you are very familiar with the way we calculate for um, cost of sales, I think it's very similar. You open the stock of raw materials, you add your purchase of raw materials. If there are any adjustments like carriage inwards and returns outwards, you do that to get your net purchases of raw materials. Then you get you add it to the opening stock to get your cost of raw materials available for use. You subtract your closing stock of raw materials. Then finally you have your direct material figure included in production. And then you add your direct labor and direct expenses to get a prime cost. And then if there are any factory overheads, you add them to get your cost of production. Take note that non-factory overheads will not be included in the manufacturing account. And from direct material coming down, we add everything. The only time you do a subtraction is with a closing work in progress. Other than that, everything is supposed to be added. And so just be careful that you don't go and do some unnecessary subtractions. This is the manufacturing account. If you have any question, you can send it to me via WhatsApp on the number that is showing on your screen. If you have any comments, you can make it down there and you can uh, um, also send me a message personally and then I'll reply you. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch out for part two of this lesson where we are going to take a practical example and try and solve it together with the income statement and the statement of financial position. Until we meet again next time, it is bye for now. Keep following. Bye-bye.